Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining our session on the Radio Intelligent Controller um, at the uh, Open Networking and Edge Summit uh, of the Linux Foundation. I'm Konstantin Polychronopoulos uh, with Juniper, and I'm pleased to introduce uh, Francisco, better known as Paco Martin Pignatelli. Uh, Paco is a Vodafone executive with more than 22 years of experience in every aspect of the network, uh, having served um, as um, a, a key driver uh, on the radio, on the core, on the transport, also in, in various capacities. However, over the last uh, almost five, six years, Paco has been one of the leaders of open uh, radio access networks, the Oran Alliance, major contributor, and um, uh, heading the Vodafone activities in that respect. So we're very pleased to have Paco here, who will share with us uh, Vodafone's uh, plans, thoughts, and uh, projections about um, Oran and uh, in 5G and not only. Thank you, Paco. Over to you. Thank you, Constantin. Uh, yes, it's Paco Martin here. I am head of uh, Open Run in Vodafone. It used to be Radio Product, but uh, we recently decided to change the name from Radio Product to Open Run because our, our uh, vision is that all the radio will be open. So we are working on that. Uh, we started actually this project about uh, five years ago, I initially focused on, um, on, on, on just cost, but uh, then uh, this, this opportunity of radio telecontrol came up, so, so extending, extending the scope. Um, Looking forward to having the conversation here. Thank you, Paco. So in this session, in this session, we're going to uh, to have uh, Paco uh, present uh, again Vodafone's um, uh, plans and activities around the radio intelligent controller. Um, uh, that will be followed by uh, Juniper's um, uh, introduction of the radio intelligent controller um, and our activities in Oran. Um, and um, uh, the session will be followed by a few questions that we're going to ask Paco and see where Vodafone is heading uh, in this very important uh, segment of 5G. Uh, Paco, please go ahead with your presentation. Thank you, Constantin. So uh, f first point to note is that uh, when we started Open Run, there were a few areas that were the initial target. Uh, first of all, there was an idea of uh, changing the ecosystem and uh, making sure that there, there, there was a, a, a model, a way to do radio that uh, was different from before, that wasn't including uh, uh, some of the problems of, of traditional radio, including a vendor lock-in, the fact that you, you deploy a network with a supplier and then it's difficult to change uh, that supplier. So, so that was one of the ideas as well as uh, enriching the ecosystem with multiple, multiple suppliers. Uh, we also thought that uh, the open run model could be a way to boost innovation, uh, initially focused on cost. So we have a number of initiatives around uh, white box solutions and uh, are around uh, in, improving uh, um, the, the radio, including the baseband, including common of the shell hardware. Th those are targeted uh, technology evolutions, but, but we, uh, we somehow uh, had also in mind the opportunity of doing something different, a new architecture. Uh, and that is what is the topic for conversation today. The main one is a radio intelligent controller and what, what it can mean for, uh, for Vodafone and for the all, overall industry as a main change. We have uh, uh, this chart that shows uh, the, the traditional way of doing things and then the new, uh, the new architecture that it's been uh, uh, put forward by, by Oran, where we have the, the chance of building a platform in the same way as uh, we, we had uh, in, in mobile systems, for example, with the uh, OSS from, from, from Apple or from, or from Android, then you can, you can build on top those applications that uh, can run either in real time or, or, or in uh, near real time. Uh, uh, delivering a, a service, uh, delivering the possibility to tailor your radio service uh, in, in different ways. So this, this opportunity um, increases uh, on one hand the, the, uh, the potential for new, for new revenue, but at the same time uh, gives, you the, uh, uh, gives you the flexibility and another, another 
a way of uh, getting efficiencies uh, thanks to your uh, to your applications and and that's something we're going to be um, discussing later if we look at the evolution well, how, how do we think things are going to be unfolding um, we we had some in the in the network in the mobile network about five years ago so it's it's uh, it's now implemented everywhere uh, things like um, anomaly detections or or a and r or or um, basic optimization uh, done in an automatic way. The the the, uh, the first path for radio intelligent control applications is is somehow replicating those functionalities, but implemented uh, in a in, in the rig platform. Uh, and we are already there. Uh, actually, I think we are already moving into the next one, which is more about uh, being able to use in in real time uh, some of the uh, uh, resource uh, management, uh, radio resource management uh, system and functionalities we have in the radio. So, being able to handle in real time uh, traffic steering or or enhancing uh, multi-user MIMO, informing. Uh, we are we are I think uh, at that level now in terms of algorithms that that we know are going to work. Those will be ported in the in form of applications on, on this uh, on this rig platform. But ultimately. The, the opportunity for a rig can come thanks to applications tailored to a specific industries uh, or a specific uh, functionalities, a specific areas, uh, for example, uh, well, energy saving can be one of them. But if we think about the, the opportunity for, for different industries, uh, we can have, imagine a, a company in the, in the automotive se sector and imagine a player that is normally not in the software of the radio, uh, like one of those um, big, big, big companies, uh, Accenture or um, um, Capgevini or some, so, some, some of those, they, they know the uh, automotive se sector very well. They know how to do programming. Th thanks to the standard uh, of Rick and, and Oran, uh, you, you can, uh, you know how, how, how to build applications then you can capture the opportunity. You know your customer, you know what they require, you know how to build software, then, then you do it. So that, that's kind of the opportunity eventually where uh, the different uh, new players will come in and, and will, will play in an area that was captive before, that was not uh, available for, uh, for, for everybody. This is gonna take some time. Uh, we know that um, uh, Rick is still Standardized, uh, but uh, we, we are pretty sure that that this is the this is the journey. So hopefully, in a couple of years from now, we'll see uh, uh, those applications starting to flourish, and and uh, the, uh, the the opportunity will will start to be to be captured. It's important as well that uh, we, as an industry, we we push and and we set the right framework for for everything. So apart from um, uh, preparing the opportunity, you need to be able to uh, take it forward. You need to be able to evolve it, and and I think we have two main actors here uh, in the in the area of spe specifications and and taking things to market. One is uh, the Oran Alliance that is uh, defining in uh, working group uh, two and working group three how uh, RIC should be working, uh, and then uh, we we have also the um, Telecom Infra Project with the uh, Radio Intelligence and Automation uh, Group uh, that's working on um, uh, making this happen. It's, it's working on on developing the uh, the applications and and, and uh, defining the use cases and and, and uh, enabling the first the first opportunity. So we now need uh, uh, more companies stepping in and uh, pre preparing some. Uh, uh, some initial applications and 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 trialing them and then and then uh, uh, making this making this happen. But I think the the ground is already prepared, and as we progress in the standardization, then things uh, um, uh, things will start to happen. But we know that there are, there are some challenges uh, to to this. So so one comes in the way of uh, specifications. So we. We need to make sure we we run fast in this cycle of 
uh, defining a specification, uh, testing, finding issues, uh, feeding that back into the original uh, specification work. Uh, the, all this needs to happen faster as it needs to happen that we certify uh, the initial solutions and that we, um, uh, the, that we prove that things, things can work. Uh, Open Run is just uh, it's an instant ecosystem. We obviously need to accelerate the implementation in the traditional radio of, of this opportunity. Uh, some of the uh, big, uh, big uh, radio suppliers are already embracing RIC, so that's fantastic news. Probably they will have a very, very important role to play to, to make it successful, but it, it's important that um, they, uh, they, they come into open run ultimately, but in particular in, in, in this RIC space where for sure they will be uh, very valuable uh, contributors from day one. And as we evolve into a new architecture, uh, not only restricted to RIC, but overall in general, we need to make sure that we are covering all the security aspects. So, so that's obviously one of the challenges and one of the key, key areas that we have to focus on. And uh, obviously one of the key, key points of uh, focus is how do we ensure that this system can work? And, and for example, I mean, we can all picture um, in our head the, the, the challenge of, you know, having multiple applications accessing at the same time to, to in, in very real time to, to something like the uh, radio scheduler. How, how do you handle those, those requests when it's multiple applications that want to have, um, you know, um, access at the same time to this uh, uh, very, very uh, uh, sensitive uh, uh, part of our uh, radio. Yeah. So, so there's, there are some technical challenges we need to tackle, but um, uh, we know what those are and uh, we know that we need to uh, start, uh, um, start playing, start, start uh, uh, developing and deploying a rig so that we, we fix them uh, as, as we encounter them. We, we have covered the, uh, the opportunity, but uh, the, the reality is that we are already there uh, uh, doing some of the uh, uh, initial steps in, uh, in the journey for, for RIC. We, we are happy to be already trialing our, um, our first implementation with Juniper in, in Turkey and Parallel Wireless. This is a, um, a solution uh, that fits somehow with what I was saying before that it's a self-optimizing network um, functionalities now implemented in, in RIC because we're talking about 4G admission control here, but it's a very important proof point for the overall platform. And it's a very important step to, to make sure that we can run this type of system on a conversion commercial environment. Um, we, we have to go through standardization, but uh, the journey has started. In, part, in particular, we are, I think, a little bit even, even more ahead uh, in the journey than that because we have already trialed and tested in, in our labs um, another, um, another system that includes other, other suppliers, the, uh, some big ones like VMware, Intel, or Capgemini, and also uh, Cohere, who are providing algorithms already that can be integrated into RIC applications. In the case of Cohere, is uh, helping us to uh, improve, uh, improve capacity thanks to uh, a better channel estimation. And uh, in the future, we, we know that we can even uh, improve the system uh, much more and uh, we have some uh, cool ideas out there. So for example, imagine, the, the, uh, uh, imagine what happens with a car. You, you, you get it that this is, is uh, tuned to some generic settings, uh, but we know that we can modify them and get more power out of it or get more uh, speed out of it. Similar thing can be done with the hardware. So you could run some uh, radio intelligent control applications on top of your hardware and get, get a modified version, uh, a modified performance for, for that hardware depending on what you want. It be the energy or, or more energy efficiency or, or, or different uh, different radio performance. So we we are willing to uh, do that as well, and, and uh, it's, it's a bit of a long shot, but uh, we're starting to work on 
uh, th those type of uh, applications. So we uh, we fully capture the uh, the opportunity for for rig. Uh, this is the this is my presentation today. I hope you liked it and looking forward to questions and and the presentation from Consumia. Thank you. Again, thank you very much, Paco, for the forward-looking, inspiring presentation. It's great to see uh, where Vodafone is heading and um, uh, share your thoughts. Uh, we're going to switch and give a view now. We'll continue basically, um, you know, on the radio intelligent controller, and I will give um, a, uh, a summary of the activities we have, uh, the solutions uh, we have built at uh, Juniper on the radio intelligent controller and Oran. Uh, and, and, you know, share some of the thoughts that go um, beyond the um, uh, trial at Vodafone with Parallel Wireless um, and Juniper. So again, you know, as Paco um, outlined, uh, we are already engaged in a, in a trial at Vodafone uh, in a multi-vendor uh, setup where we partner with Parallel Wireless, uh, which provides the virtualized BBU, the H and, Z, H and, and G. Uh, a gateway and the EMS uh, and is fully integrated with the Juniper uh, near, near real time and non-near real time rig. The initial focus is going to, to, uh, to be uh, select X apps, uh, specifically admission control, uh, which uh, works not just in 5G, but uh, we're going to demonstrate here the ability to do so in a 4G network. We, that's, that's exactly what we're doing at, uh, at Vodafone. Um, and in principle, you know, as long as uh, the a virtualized radio uh, can provide the necessary PMs and the necessary interfaces, uh, either, you know, or an E2 interfaces or even proprietary interfaces, a, a radio intelligent controller, a RIC, can bring the benefits of um, uh, management of the radio resources, dynamic management, to pretty much any virtualized, any software-driven uh, radio, even though the focus is primarily on 5G. So that's exactly what we're demonstrating at uh, Vodafone in partnership with uh, Parallel Wireless and Juniper. But let me take a step back and look at uh, the radio intelligent controller uh, in a more you know, general uh, uh, way. Uh, if we really think where we were uh, up until 4G, where the radio was uh, built out of proprietary appliances uh, and it was extremely difficult to upgrade the radio. Uh, sometimes you had to really you know, lift uh, physical uh, boxes out of the uh, you know uh, radio sites and and uh, do upgrades or replacement etc. All that is the old way of doing business, right? As we move to uh, fully software defined radios uh, driven by the Oran architecture, now we have the possibility of truly uh, programmatically defined use cases on the radio without having to touch any physical resource. Uh, I like to use the analogy of uh, operating systems uh, to CPUs, right? So I call, you know, the RIC is, uh, is, is to the run what the operating system is to the CPU. If we really think about it, that's exactly the, the right type of analogy. Or the hypervisor to the virtual machine, right? The radio intelligent controller uh, essentially gives, opens up the radio to applications and provides the means to manage low level uh, radio resources to allocate them across different users, across different devices, uh, and manage the way the spectrum is shared uh, among competing use cases. A very powerful paradigm that allows us now to build new applications, applications that uh, can come in the form of uh, SON as an X app running on the near real time rig, as well as applications that are AI, ML driven and uh, leverage uh, trends, that historical trends in the network to uh, provision radio resources ahead of time as uh, the need arises. Uh, in addition to that, of course, applications like uh, load balancing, traffic steering, uh, massive MIMO, et cetera. We'll talk about other uh, po possibilities for X apps, uh, bring new value to the radio new ways of managing the radio and therefore building applications that not only drive 
uh, optimization, new ways of uh, addressing optimization in the radio, uh, but also opens up the possibility for new business models that uh, drive revenue generation as well. So uh, it's really the new way of thinking about the radio as well as uh, the rest of the resources in a software-centric, software-driven uh, approach. We have managed to do so across the entire infrastructure. Ra the radio was the last bastion, and Oran uh, enables us now to, to really bring software-driven architectures uh, to the most critical component of uh, 5G, and not only 5G. Uh, at Juniper, of course, we're building uh, not just the platform, we're addressing also key aspects of the architecture that have to do with uh, the way X apps potentially can interfere with each other, trying to manage or reconfigure the same type of resource. Uh, we address those, we address the mitigation. So we enable third party applications also to run on our RIC, uh, leveraging our SDK that exposes common PMs to X apps, for example, addresses conflict uh, resolution and mitigation, uh, and uh, provides a very flexible way of sharing PMs in the database performance, uh, key performance indicators across different X apps. Um, so certifying X apps, as well as uh, addressing um, uh, conflict resolution are key components of the platform. On top of that, we're building a host of uh, X apps in partnership with um, other technology companies, as well as uh, homegrown within uh, Juniper in partnership with our customer operate, uh, operators. And these are, you know, these fall in, in three large buckets, the personalized service experience uh, type of X apps and R apps, revenue stream um, generating X apps, opening up new business models, uh, as well as CapEx and OpEx reduction um, I like very much what Paco presented um, in, uh, in the use cases where uh, his position was that, you know, the RIC enables now domain exper expert uh, entities to build their own X apps. Uh, he used the example, if, uh, if I recall, of Accenture or Capgemini, for example, that have a lot of expertise on the uh, automobile industry, right? To build, to leverage the RIC, to build domain-specific XAPs that will be, uh, you know, uh, needed down the path uh, by that segment of the industry. And we can repeat the same concept across different industry verticals, enterprise verticals. So a very powerful model. Now, uh, perhaps the most complex, and, and uh, in my view and the view of many, the most complex XAP and RAP is the one that drives network slicing. And what is network slicing? Uh, by now, everybody knows. Uh, taking essentially today's networks that look at uh, everything in uh, the same way, you know, every, every device, every use case is treated in exactly the same way, one size fits all, to where network slicing is going to take us, where the network uh, provides specialized uh, SLAs and um, uh, uh, even applications to each different device, different use case, different user for that matter, right? So uh, the notion of network slicing allows us to build now essentially uh, purpose-built networks uh, that address specific use cases on the same physical uh, infrastructure. A very powerful model that um, enables not only the industry for that all use cases, but also opens up the possibility to potentially offer private mobile uh, networks through the operator infrastructure as well. We'll talk a bit more about that. So if we look uh, at network slicing, one of the critical components is the ability to uh, bring up a network slice in an end-to-end -end fashion. So the radio is the most complex use case, of course, uh, and the one that was elusive so far because it was closed. Oran opens up the radio, the radio intelligent controller uh, enables now any um, uh, application to access even resource management um, uh, hooks into the radio and tailor them to the needs of the application. And of course, the RIC is the arbitrator of how resources are shared 
dynamically across different um, uh, tenancies, different slices. Um, in doing so, of course, the RAG domain orchestrator is the critical component that brings up not only the infrastructure, but leveraging the near real-time RIC and the non-real-time RIC can build, again, uh, use case specific slices. And given that the RIC has a um, global view of the radio resources and the you know, use of the radio resource at any given time, it also has the uh, ability to uh, do things that are not possible without the radio intelligence controller. For example, uh, we can build an end-to-end -end slice that has dedicated U, right? Since we have now visibility of all the distributed units in the radio in an oral architecture, we can dedicate DU, for example, that share potentially the same radio um, uh, with, uh, you know, uh, on a specific slice and um, have other DUs that are shared across different slices. We see an example here. Uh, the orchestration and the stitching together of all the data plane components in a way that addresses the uh, network slice specific requirements from the SLA point of view is key, excuse me, is key in, um, in, in enabling network slicing end to end. And of course, placement of the data plane uh, components like the DU, the CU, user plane CU uh, is again uh, dependent on the requirements, the performance requirements of each particular slice. All of that, again, is possible through the RIC, but is um, uh, enabled by the, by the uh, uh, RAN domain orchestrator. As we place the components, the functional components, the next question is how do you connect them together, right? So the RAN orchestrator has to work with the transport domain orchestrator to be able to provide uh, the uh, appropriate connectivity uh, and address also uh, the necessary SLA requirements to build the end-to-end -end use case. And Juniper focuses, this is one of our, um, you know, uh, main differentiators, uh, leveraging the Juniper strengths on the transport domain to be able to deliver uh, a, an SLA uh, along with uh, the or orchestrating a network slice across uh, not just the Oran domain, but across the transport, the one connectivity, as well as the uh, data center. Um, this is a simple use case uh, that uh, relates to admission control, where the non-real-time rig uh, coordinates with the real-time rig to orchestrate different slices and manage resources, PDU, uh, uh, allocated PDUs in this case on a per slice basis, dynamically. The example we use is uh, three slices. One is dedicated to general uh, use case, Another one, let's say, can be dedicated to a hospital with um, 200 PDU sessions um, allocated to that use case, or uh, another slice that is uh, used by a school uh, with up to 100 PDU sessions. Now, the school may not use all the PDU sessions over a weekend, right? So the RIC provides the flexibility of reallocating those PDUs to another use case that maybe over the weekend um, uh, may have another slice that may have more requirements, right? More importantly, this can be done dynamically. An emergency use case, which requires the hospital uh, to, uh, uh, you know, to have uh, more, uh, uh, more access to the network, more PDU sessions, uh, would trigger through an external enrichment server, um, uh, dynamic allocation taken, for example, away from the school, PDU sessions allocating them to the, to the hospital. All that is possible with the RIC. In summary, um, Juniper's focus on uh, the RIC and the end-to-end -end network slicing uh, can be summarized here in these four broad categories. Um, open, we're driving for open and interoperable uh, RIC platform. And we're happy today to claim that we are working with partners onboarding their X apps on our RIC platform, in addition to building our own you know, uh, X apps and R apps, uh, leveraging AI-driven um, enterprise experience, addressing user experience at the very core, and network efficiencies, leveraging AI. Uh, Juniper has a long tradition in this space uh, and a singular focus on AI-driven enterprise 
uh, using the MIST and the Marvis AI engine, which is being integrated in our uh, 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 radio intelligence controlling platform. Uh, Oran Alliance leadership is key, uh, not just for Juniper, but for all the technology vendors and the operators. Um, Paco is one of the leaders um, uh, in, you know, and contributors in the Oran community as Vodafone uh, in general, many other operators, obviously. Uh, we at Juniper um, chair um, the network slicing uh, task group, no surprise there, as well as uh, co-chair the uh, use case task group. And we are a major contributor, perhaps one of the top contributors in the Oran community. Um, and uh, we have participation in pretty much all of the uh, uh, working groups. Uh, finally, a key focus for us is the end-to-end -end network slice orchestration. And again, I cannot emphasize enough the importance of taking the power of the RIC on the radio, the programmable radio, and stretching that capability to deliver end-to-end -end, uh, network slice with strong SLA guarantees. Right? And that involves the ability to um, enforce the SLA across uh, several transport domains, as well as several clouds that host parts of the packet core, as well as the data network that can be on the operator prem or in a public network. So we will uh, um, uh, switch to uh, uh, asking using the, you know, the benefit of having uh, Paco with us, uh, to find out a bit more about, you know, where his his mind is and where Vodafone is heading. So, Paco, would you be, you know, kind to share with us uh, your views about adoption of uh, the Oran architecture by Vodafone, and specifically, where do you see Vodafone being uh, on the adoption side by, let's say, 2025, in the next four or five years? That, that's a that's a very good question. Um, we we are preparing ourselves to contribute more to the uh, Oran Alliance and, and, and TIP. Uh, yeah, I think it's very, very essential that uh, some of the big players in the ecosystem help uh, developing Open Run in a collaborative manner. Even though we are a big player and we are putting resources, we cannot do this alone. So it's very important that uh, some of us uh, in, in the vendor community, in the operator community, we we put all the focus. I think uh, uh, where we are in 2025 and beyond will be pretty much dependent on uh, open run getting to the right maturity, which I think it's going to happen. Uh, also, it will depend on uh, the, uh, the adoption, um, the opportunities uh, being out there, and, and we are already planning for more markets. We have trials uh, in, in several countries with uh, different suppliers. Uh, but this needs to happen also in other uh, operators, not, not just us. Uh, and I think in, lately we have seen a lot of movement in the industry. Uh, we also need to see um, some of the innovations uh, really uh, get, get in there, the promises from Open Run. So uh, be it in the cost space or here in the radio intelligent controller application space. Uh, I think it's out of question that Open Run is going to happen, the pace uh, of it and and uh, exactly the, the, the adoption is still I think, dependent on, on early success. So, yeah, I'm really looking forward to, to moving uh, in the time machine to 2025 and, and seeing where we are. But I think it's going uh, to be a big, 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 and big opportunity uh, for Open Run. Thank you, Paco. How do you see? Uh... Network slicing, you know, when we get to the point where we really can deliver network slicing uh, in an end-to-end -end fashion, of course, with the, or the, the, you know, the RIC playing a key role on the radio, uh, do you uh, see, a, you know, uh, uh, network slicing um, uh, being part of your strategy for offering private mobile network services? Do you think that is going to play a role at Vodafone? What's your perspective? Yeah, I think uh, I think there is no doubt uh, in that. Uh, we we used to try and implement uh, similar ideas to, to slicing in the past, you know, in, in 4G and, and and before. But it's now with 5G that this is really possible. 
And I think what we see with the RIC is an opportunity to take this to to, to an extreme and and uh, have uh, no limits on on uh, on what you can do, right? So um, yeah, I think it's uh, it's gonna be happening. I think if we are fair, I think that up to date there is a um, uh, still a little of, a little bit of work being done on the actual use cases, and some of them are clear, some some of them are not. But I think the uh, foundation and the the flexibility that that's required is going to be there, and, and and for sure it will be used. Uh, sometimes you you develop a basic functionality or flexibility option, and then it is used later. We have seen that in in many technological uh, uh, breakthroughs, right? Yeah, that's uh, that that makes a lot of sense. I agree. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I've been accused of being uh, 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 focusing too much on network slicing, which is really, you know, I, I take the accusation, uh, you know, uh, guilty as charged. Uh, so going back to network slicing, um, I would love to have a crystal ball and, and try to, to see when operators are, are, are going to, to start adapting network slicing. But let me ask the question, uh, you know, in a, in a simpler uh, form. When, what's your opinion about when network slicing is going to become a must-have in 5G networks? And um, initially, it may be only on those three slices that, uh, you know, 3GPP has, has essentially uh, mandated the URLC, the enhanced mobile broadband, and the machine-to-machine, uh, -machine, right? But there are opportunities for in between. But do you see any of them becoming sort of a mandate uh, in the networks, and if so, by when? I think the uh, the market will dictate as far as long as we see uh, uh, opportunities uh, um, uh, and you know commercial rollouts, then the, that, that that will trigger and will be uh, uh, the the foundation for for that uh, you know uh, capability being implemented and, and as a must, right? So uh, when this is going to happen. Uh, in a year, maybe uh, I would I would say not not way more than that. I think it's uh, we are seeing we are seeing a, a, a five year rollouts uh, happening uh, more and more. The, the, the development and deployment of uh, standalone networks and and the full five G is, is becoming available uh, and and as such, you know, slicing will happen. So I'd say a year, no more than that. That's music to my ears, and I'm sure to the ears of many of our attendees. <laughs> uh, finally, Paco, uh, how, you know, for, for many of these, um, you know, forward-looking um, capabilities in the network, it's going to take um, several, you know, uh, technology vendors to work together, right? Speaking of network slicing, for example. And of course, operators are going to be the catalyst, the critical component in enforcing the hand of especially the large you know vendors to work with innovative you know um, uh, uh, you know companies in the space to really deliver this promise of um, software driven everything right in 5g uh, do you see operators like vodafone global you know uh, tier one operators uh, becoming more active in forcing the hand of uh, you know the large vendors to say you know you've got to work with X, Y, Z to bring this value to me. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I I see that happening, but my hope is that this becomes uh, naturally the way of working. I think uh, the, the new the, the new model is, is by default is uh, by, by by design is is collaborative. So, and nice. um, I hope that that happens naturally and that we all find the right incentives to to play. And that's, that's a high note to, uh, to end our presentation. Uh, and that's definitely a, a great wish. Um, thank you so much, Paco. Uh, and uh, thank, thank you very much to all, uh, all of the participants. Uh, we look forward to uh, seeing you hopefully in the next, you know, the next time face-to-face uh, -face when uh, our world will be in a, in a better shape. Thank you again. Goodbye. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you.